Yes, hello and welcome to another vlog from Ben Ryder. the Kawasaki Z650 RS. Uh, if you are wondering if this is kind of a, uh, <clears throat> wait a minute, we've had this before. Yes, you're right. I tested this already in the black version, but you know, as you might know, I don't really like black because, uh, yeah, you don't see very much of, of the styling and stuff because everything is black and uh, the black is sucking up the sun rays, you know, so you don't see any shades and stuff like that. Anyways, this is now finally the green version. We have three colors available. First of all, this one, the green version, which is more expensive, about 200 euros or so. We have a black version. I think this is the cheapest one. And we have a black gray version, which is also on the price level of this one, on the green one. So about 200 euro more expensive. This is a two-cylinder 649cc uh, engine. Uh, we have, uh, it's a regular, you know, the Kawasaki had this engine for a long time already. Um, we have uh, 68 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. Um, yeah, this version, as I said, is a 48 horsepower because my dealer has uh, only 48 horsepower of the 650s. Yeah, we have the tires is 120 and 160 in the rear, both 17 inch. Uh, the tank is 12 liter. Uh, we have 4.8 liters per 100 kilometers fuel consumption. The seat height is 820 millimeters. We have full LED, full LED lights, front and rear. And uh, the sound is not too bad, actually, not too shabby. We have two disc brakes, as you can see in the front, pretty good. And even all already with the 48 horsepower, it is a pretty nice beast. And for me, the 48 horsepower would be sufficient already. Anyways, let's get to the controls and the display. So on the left-hand side, we have the clutch lever, which is adjustable in five positions. We have uh, in the front, we have the passing light switch here for your, for your finger here, right here. Uh, we have high beam and low beam switch here. We have the uh, up and down button for the display. We have left and right turn signal switch here. We have the horn button here. We have the uh, hazard light switch here. And that's everything on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have the throttle. We have the brake lever for the front disc brakes, which is also adjustable in five positions. We have the cutoff switch here and we have the starter switch here. So let's get to the display or rather the instrument cluster here on the left hand side We have the speedometer with different uh, Control lights there or indicator lights. I should say on the right hand side. We have the RPM counter <clears throat> Which starts the red line starts at 10,000 uh, in the middle. We have an LC inverted LC display 
uh, it is uh, actually one of the uh, points which I don't really like about this bike because it's uh, like tucked in the middle there. Uh, it uh, constantly gets the shadow from the big uh, uh, um, gauges there. And since it is an L inverted LC display, uh, you know, the contrast is not so good. And if you have shadow on it, shade on it, if you have don't have direct sunlight, it's getting kind of hard to read, actually. If you have dry, direct sunlight on it, that's no problem. But I don't really like these inverted LC display, uh, displays. They're always not really uh, that good to, uh, to read. Anyways, uh, in the middle, we have uh, on top, we have the oil uh, light there down below. Also, we have the little oil can showing that there's something wrong with the oil pressure. On the left hand side, we have the tank, the fuel tank capacity. On the right hand side, the cool and temperature. In the middle, we have the uh, gear indicator. Uh, underneath, uh, underneath of that, we have the clock. And down below, we have the multi-function display field. We can switch it around with the uh, uh, button here with the arrow button on the on the handlebar. I will switch it now up. We have the actual range at the moment, but since we're not riding, it will not show anything. We have the odometer, we have trip A, trip B. We have the actual fuel consumption in kilometers per liter. I'm sure you can change that around if you want. We also have the average fuel consumption, we have the range, and that's about it. So we're back on the bike. Let's go back to the dealer now. This time we're not going on the freeway. Let's go on the country roads and little teeny tiny towns along the way. I think this bike is better suited for that, to be honest. So, yeah, the seat is quite comfy. It has a height of 820 millimeters. And uh, it is okay. I mean, actually, it's quite comfy, more comfortable than any than any other seat, you know. And uh, the mirrors are round, but you can see everything there. White English. You can see everything in a mirror. That is no problem. Uh, this is the 48 horsepower version. My dealer only has 48 horsepower for the 650 cc engines um, So I cannot really tell you what 68 horsepower on this little baby feels like But I'm sure it is quite nice because the 68 uh, the 48 horsepower for me They are already enough, you know enough fun a very good uh, acceleration very nice uh, uh, what you might call a torque so I don't have any complaints at all you know it just the bike just looks nice rides nice nice clutch nice gear shift and I think uh, especially you can you can use it or uh, you can preferably use it for on country roads, it's a lot of fun. We'll go through a little town here and then hopefully onto some country roads back to the dealer in Malaga. Yeah, it is an easy rider if there's anything like that, I don't know. It is really easy to handle, easy to navigate to 
to work with this bike so I would definitely say if you like a very very stylish bike as a beginner yeah you can take this take it either you know depending on your license of course for the reduced version or if you can take the 68 horsepower version still I think very beginner friendly there is some slight shaking vibration in the seat at around 80 to 100 I already noticed I just noticed it now again for fourth and fifth gear so it doesn't really matter which gear you're in uh, yeah they are quite dominant these vibrations uh, little teeny tiny uh, micro vibrations in the seat uh, so uh, I guess depending on your buttock uh, you will feel it more or, or less you know one thing I also noticed there are two things which I noticed one thing or you can get used to it fairly quickly the other one I don't know maybe it's not a big uh, thing for you the first thing is the clutch engagement it comes in very early on some bikes you know when you the, th the clutch here the I don't know five centimeters or so which you can uh, work on uh, only the last half centimeter actually has clutch engagement like on the Hondas you know some of the Hondas which I don't really like uh, on this one it comes very early so you have a lot of uh, 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 how do you say this uh, way or travel you have a lot of travel so you can work with the clutch better you can doze it better uh, I like it better when the clutch comes on earlier like this one here wow there's it is a saloon here look at that yes yeah, so from riding wow I really like this green sparkling in the sun that's so beautiful uh, yeah from riding nothing really to complain about this it's just uh, you sit you get on it you sit on it you enjoy it there's nothing really wrong with it you don't really have any complaints you know except for the stuff that I already told you about it just looks nice rides nice you just have a lot of fun with this bike ergonomics <laughs> Uh, are quite nice actually for me I'm 175 the seat height is 820 so it is still okay for me and uh, but everything here with my arms and with my knees and legs and everything is really nice and uh, yeah that's the other thing maybe you can relate to if you're about my size and uh, yeah that's just what I wanted to add Yeah, we have a naked bike style, naked bike feeling here. We don't have any wind protection. Well, just a teeny tiny bit from the instrument cluster. Pretty nice, straight and without any turbulence airflow. I do like it. And especially in the summertime, of course, <laughs> you get quite a nice airflow here going. That's it already. <laughs> my verdict you had my verdict actually through, throughout the whole video uh, you know I will put it in my verdict here on the screen for you know what I don't like what I didn't like just teeny tiny things nothing serious that's about it about the Kawasaki Z650 highly I can highly recommend it to you if you're in the market for a retro style bike in this segment thanks very much for watching this has been right out take care bye bye